Hi again. So uh, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to set up this category page um, so that it will run a dynamic query. Now uh, a dynamic query is one where the page is going to go to the database, in this case here's our database, and it is going to run a query to return information uh, but it's going to be based on what the user inputted. Now in this case here the user has five categories they can choose from and what we want to do is um, have the query basically go and get either all the skirts if they select that or all the dresses if they select that and so on uh, and then our next step will then obviously be to um, display all the results if there are any. So um, if you can recall from the previous um, tutorials the way we've been doing this is when I click on um, one of these links in a URL you can see it sends through the ID of the category I clicked on. So in this case skirts has an ID of one. If I click to say on jackets, have a look in our URL, you can see that it has a category ID of four. Now this matches up with our category table here um, in the database. There you can see our five categories. So what we want to do is we want our page to go to the stock table and return all the items that match the category ID that was clicked on. So you can see here if I just uh, sort by category ID put that random there, get rid of that. Um, you can see there are one, two, three items there that belong to category ID number one, or skirts. There's those three there, there's one, two, three, four that belong to category ID number two, which is dresses. Okay, so we want um, to return all those items. Um, so what we're going to do is this category page which we created last time um, that is appearing here in our main content that is going to run a dynamic query. So back in notepad here you can see our category page so far just has the word category on it. Um, it is going to be appearing if I come to my index page um, it is included in our main content area and you can see um, a little bit of code we did last time and we set this up as a one page site. So in a category page here, I'm just going to remove this. Um, and as always, start with a mistake. <laughs> Good start. There we go. Um, first thing I really need to do is actually just um, double check that they did actually select something. They're not just trying to um, get to this page somehow. So I'm just going to do a quick if statement to check that if it's not set, so that. Um, and then this has been set in the get array, so we call that with that dollar sign underscore get, and then in square brackets and apostrophe, the um, information that has been sent across is this thing I called category ID. So if that's not set, and that's what the exclamation mark means, um, then all we're going to do is we're just going to redirect the site um, back to the home page. So um, the header there will and sets the location. Uh, it's going to go back to the index page, and you notice it's not setting a page uh, in the get array, which means it should then display the home information. So we'll just double check that. So if I come back to this and I click say on dresses is working, but if I come in here and I don't set the category ID, it redirects us back to our home page. Great, so that's working. Um, but so that's our first little bit there. In fact, if we're commenting, which we probably should be, um, so if category ID is not set, we direct back to index page. Right. So now our next thing is to run a dynamic query. So here we are going to select um, all stock items belonging to the selected category. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up the query first and then we'll um, dynamically add the category ID. So I'm going to do this, I tend to do um, this in a very step by step way. The first thing would be to set up the um, SQL that I want to run. So I tend to again have my variable stock, dollar sign stock and then underscore SQL just means that it's the SQL that will be run um, in our database. and what I want to do is I'm going to be selecting um, actually a bunch of stuff and I should probably just quickly duck out to the table to show you. Um, I'm going to get the the name 
and the price and also I guess the ID number of the item because we're going to set these up later as uh, dynamic links. Um, so I'll grab those three things but um, I'm also going to want to get the category name so I can have it sitting at the top of the page and just to demonstrate what I mean um, you can see here in this worked on example um, when I click on skirts you can see not only does it return the information we want it also has the name of the category so dresses there you go so um, not only am I selecting information from the stock table I'm also going to be selecting the name of the category from the category table so we're actually going to need to do uh, an SQL join so um, I think it's scary but uh, just something else we need to consider so when you're selecting from two tables you are going to need to specify uh, what table the information is coming from so normally for example if I was sorry I must have ducked back to the stock table and checked my column headings okay so normally if I was just going to select the stock ID I would do something like that and then um, the next column is called name and then I've got price for example um, and then I could say well that's from stock but because I'm selecting from two tables I'm actually going to need to specify as a prefix here stock dot stock ID so I'm specifying the name of the table we're selecting from so stock dot name and stock dot price um, but also from the category table let's see category, spell, category dot name now um, and this is where there's a little problem with my naming conventions you notice both the stock and category tables have a column called name so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up this category name as an alias so I just go as and then I'm going to call it uh, cat name like that um, so what that means is when our results come back uh, there'll be a new column called with the heading cat name and you'll see what that looks like in a minute um, so you can see that it's from the stock table but what I also want to do is I want to join the category table on and what we need to do is we need to specify um, how we're joining it so in this case here if I just go back to the table what I need to do is basically say when I click on one of those links it's going to specify the category ID so say for example it was 2 what we need to do is take that number go to the category table go down this category ID column and find the number 2 and that will give us our name there so to do that when we say join category on we're saying um, from the stock table take the category ID that was selected and when it, then go to the category table and find it there so basically go through that and find that too right. so um, the last thing we need to do really is run a filter and that is to say what is the category ID and so that's where um, and we have to have the prefix in there so stock dot category ID equals and then we're going to have a number in there so I'm just going to for example I'll just put a 2 in here now and copy all this and paste it into my database just so you can see what it's going to look like there we go. paste that in there hit go and you can see it's returned the stock ID the name and the price as well as the name of the category and you can see it's created that extra alias column if I hadn't set up the alias this would be called name as well and while that's not an issue right here when I go to display this information on the page having duplicate names in these columns would cause a real problem so that's what our information is going to come through looking like um, so here back in the code let's find that trouble is of course as I go across um, it's not equal to 2 we don't know what that's going to be equal to what we need to do is we need to take the category ID out of our URL and remember that's been set through sent through in the get array so use the full stop to concatenate dollar sign underscore get because it's the get array and in square brackets and in apostrophe we want category ID and that oops, I can't get to the end of the line here what's going on we'll get there semicolon always important um, so that should give us a nice dynamic query now um, 
we can just check that, let's just echo that query and just make sure that it is working, so stop underscore SQL, and once we've got that, we're checking that it's working, uh, then we can actually run it. So here we are, if I go to skirts, there it is there, there's my big query, and it picked up the category ID of one, dresses, perfect, two, accessories is a five. Brilliant, so this is going to work. So I'm just going to remove my little debug there. Now um, the next thing I want to do is just um, run the query. And uh, the way we're going to do that is just basically to say um, if and create another um, stock underscore query equals, and then we're using MySQL I. brackets there. Um, remember there are two parameters to MySQL query. There is the database connection string which is set in our includes file and the query we're running which is stock SQL. So if that thing runs without error, oops, probably need that. open a bracket, um, well then we're going to actually organize our results. In other words, if some results come back, let's organize them. So I'll set up a little record set, stock underscore RS, um, MySQLI, associative. So this is gonna put it into an associative array, which makes it nice and easy for us to uh, organize and display the results. And the thing that we're actually organizing is the stock underscore query. So what this is doing is, again, just to finish up, it is going to run this complicated looking SQL query on our stock table and a category table. Uh, when it runs that, if that result comes back with no error, um, or with some results, sorry, um, it will then organize those results into an associative array called stock underscore RS, and that variable there is the one that we're going to be iterating through and displaying all the multiple results down uh, on the page. And that is what we will do next time. So uh, actually before we go, should we just double check that that works? So there's no errors going forward. Right there. Um, and of course I've made a mistake. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah, and of course I can't spell because I'm missing a Y. <laughs> so uh, hang on. Back in here in the code. Always important about the spell right when you're coding. Um, just try that one last time. Yes, there we go. So no results, but on the bright side, no errors. So next time what we'll be looking at is how we can then display those multiple results um, in some kind of grid format down the page. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient with me. And uh, I'll see you next time.